Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our Facebook Live event talking about everything you want to know about Fall 2020 move-in. It's, it, it's here. It's here, it's it, just around the corner and we know this is information that you have been dying to know. So. We promise that we are going to get to every question that you have. Um, we're going to do our best to be able to do that. And, um, you know, we, we've got a long agenda. So yes. stay tuned, buckle up. Um, we'll do some quick introductions. My name is Katherine Ellsworth. I am a marketing specialist with Campus Services, and I specifically work with Housing and Residence Life and my co-host. I'm Chris Bruno, Director of Customer Service and Operations within Housing and Residence Life. Yeah, so we're here just to, like to reiterate, talk about all of, things, all of the things that you want to know about move-in. Um, but parents who are tuning in, thank you so much for joining us. We have a treat, you know, for you. So some of the parents that are tuning in are going to have the opportunity to win this very cool from our nest to the owl's nest shirt we want you know you guys to receive this um, our plan is to reach out to some of you um, and send it to you in the mail so you can wear it on your students move in day and look super official very excited we made some of these last year um, and they were such a hit parents loved wearing them um, and we know that we're not going to be able to send one to every single parent um, however our bookstore will also be selling them um, so you can pick one up you know if, if one parent gets them but the other parent yeah. didn't you can come matching we know your student will and, love that and these were like Willy Wonka's golden ticket last year yes. for the parents that got them they yeah. wore them loud and proud on moving day it was really cool to see everybody out there wearing them so good luck yeah so if you if you want to win one make sure to leave a really great question or a comment and we'll be reaching out to you um, in the comments later on this week yeah, so first and foremost, in case you don't already know, the move-in dates are published on our housing website. Uh, that's ksuhousing.kennesaw.edu. But for the Kennesaw campus, we have move-in spread out over four days. It's Wednesday, August 12th through Saturday, August 15th. We'll be doing move-in from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on those days. And if you're a Marietta campus resident, we're doing that Friday, August 14th and Saturday, August 15th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So that's, that's out there for consumption on the website. We'll talk a little bit later in the show about early move-in students and what your dates and times are. Uh, because some of this, it may look a little different for you moving in early outside of the big crowd. Yeah, so before we jump into anything else, we know that the big burning question is how are we going to maintain social distancing? How is moving going to be safe for me and my family? And we want you to know that we are doing everything we can to make this a successful and safe experience, not only for your families, students, parents, and guests, but also for our staff members um, and our faculty volunteers that are going to be um, helping with move-in. So we're, we're going to list out and, and share some of the social distancing guidelines that we are going to be putting in place. This information will also be available on our website for you to look at. If you forget everything that I'm telling you today, you will be able to, to go over it there. But first thing is that all staff members, volunteers, students, and guests are required to wear a face, a mask or face covering. Each resident will receive um, a reusable face covering during check-in. Guests should bring face coverings with them. Um, so just remember that this is something that the USG has already communicated mm -hmm. it's mandated across all university campuses not just KSU um, but please keep that in mind as you're coming for move-in day parents and guests to have a face covering with you um, our move-in marketplaces will have some available for purchase if you want to stay in the KSU spirit that day and purchase one but a reusable one like our friend is wearing here is perfectly fine just make sure that you have a face covering there um, a lot of people are maybe asking well how, uh, you know, if I'm living on campus, where do I have to wear my face covering? So anywhere that isn't your specific unit or residential suite is where you will have to wear your face covering. So if you're leaving your, your room as a student and you're going out in the hallways and community spaces, dining halls, things like that, you're going to be wanting to wear that face covering. Um, high touch areas like door handles, stair rails, and elevator buttons are going to be disinfected frequently throughout the day. We know that those are going to be in high use and we're going to make sure that those areas are as clean as possible for all of our guests. And we ask that students bring no more than two guests to assist with move-in. And I know that this can be a little tough, especially if you've got brothers, sisters, cousins, grandma, grandpa. We know that this is a big and exciting day for so many of you. Um, but in order to, for us to really be able to provide great social distancing guidelines, we ask for your cooperation and help in just bringing two people. Um, 
FaceTime them as you're moving in. <laughs> uh, you know, try to record, vlog your whole experience, put it on your Instagram story and share it. We will share on our page too. Um, we know that it can be a little bit different this year, especially if you've had brothers and sisters or friends that have moved in early to college and they were able to bring everyone and everyone had matching t-shirts. Um, this experience might look a little bit different. We promise it's still going to be fun. It's and our team is going to make it as fun as possible. Um, but we do ask that you just bring two people with you so that we can maintain those distancing guidelines. Um, we have scheduled move-in arrival times to minimize the number of individuals in shared spaces throughout the day. So Chris is going to talk about this a little bit later, but you sh students should have already received at least two communications from us talking about move-in arrival times, scheduling yours, and picking your date. And the reason we did this is so that we are able to see how many people are coming in during specific blocks of time. We've limited the number of people that can come in between a window of time so that we have a good flow of traffic and we're able to, you know, social distance people out and the last point that I'm going to talk about is our drive-through check-in process limits contact allows students to wait in the comfort of their vehicle so we'll talk about the drive-through process and what that looks like when we talk the overview of the day but just know that when you come to move in your check-in process you don't have to get out of your car so you will stay in your vehicle we will do everything in your in, in the vehicle it's pretty much hands-free mm -hmm. at this point um, so that's one you know peace of mind that you can go with yeah. you have some other ones that you want to share absolutely yeah so we have these moving <laughs> moving bins that will be available. They are a limited number of them. We can't rent one per student. But as you use those and you bring the items from your car to your room, as you return those, our facilities team will be disinfecting those with an approved um, substance that will disinfect the entire moving bin. And we'll make sure that those are cleaned and dry before the next person gets to use them. That's something we're really excited about. Uh, there are certain doors. Uh, Catherine was talking about high touch areas. So there will be certain doors that we will prop for move-in day. And we'll close them at a certain time uh, just to maintain safety and security within the building. But during the move-in process, we will prop these doors open so you won't have to reach for a handle and pull it open. We're going to have those propped for you just to keep, again, uh, lower those number of high touch areas. Stairwells are going to be one directional where we can achieve that. So some of our buildings are laid out differently. Um, so some stairwells will be up only, some will be down only to try to prevent cross traffic on stairwells as people are moving in and out of the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one, another thing we're doing. Elevator use, we're going to limit that to one family per elevator. So you won't be able to have 10 or 12 people inside the elevator at any given time. Uh, it's only one family per elevator. And we define a family as the student and whoever is helping them move in. Uh, so we do ask that students maintain a six foot <coughs> social distancing at all time. And we will have, just like you see everywhere, markers on the floor. There's going to be a lot of signage up. Catherine and the marketing team have been working on designing all that for us for move-in day. So you won't be able to miss it. We've installed additional hand sanitizing stations uh, in all of our communities. And our facilities team will be making sure that those are stocked and fully functional on move-in day. So that you can sanitize your hands as you're coming in and out of the buildings. Now it's July 20th right. and we are just a couple weeks away from move-in and so internally on the housing side we are not going to be doing any placements off the wait list after the end of the month. So July 31st you will not get a room offer uh, until after the start of school and that's really just for our own sake because we'll be in full-on move-in move mode doing a lot of work those, those last two weeks. So July 31st you won't see any movement on the wait list until after the start of school. But we did last year in the past several years have placed students off the wait list well into September and early October. Yeah. So if you have the ability to commute to campus for a short period of time, let us know. If you're one of those students who is on the wait list and you've already gotten housing off campus and you don't need it on campus anymore, please let us know. You can email ksuhousing at kennesaw.edu and just say, I found housing. I don't need to be on the wait list and then that will we'll take you off the wait list and we won't bother you with a room offer or a phone call or anything like that. Yeah, um, so patience, I know that's hard to have, but if you're able to be a little bit more patient, we, we might be able to place you off the wait list. Now we're going to talk more details about move-in and we want to start talking about the move-in arrival time. So yes. like I mentioned earlier, students should have already received at least two communications from us that talk about the move-in arrival times. And Chris is going to go into more information about why we did it, how we did it, and what that means for you and what actions students need to take before move-in. Yeah, so the move-in arrival time selection is brand new this year. 
We are very excited to offer that to students where you get to pick the own, your own day and arrival time window. Like Catherine said, there's a 30 minute time slot that students will pick for their move in day and time. In the housing portal, if you are a reserve student, which means that you have a room offer for fall and you've paid all of your application fees, we consider you reserved. You're good to go for fall. Only reserve students will be allowed to pick their move and arrival time. So in the housing portal, there's a time ticket that pops up right on the home page that says move in arrival time time ticket and it'll let you know the day and time that you can go in and pick your arrival time. And so that's people have been doing that in droves in the housing portal. We have almost 22, 2400 people who have already picked their move in arrival time. Everything's going great. When you log in there, you're going to see um, options. You'll, you'll be able to select which day you might want to arrive and then you'll see a 30 minute window of time. Now, that doesn't mean that you only have 30 minutes to move in. That's just the 30 minute window of time we're asking you to arrive within. And like Catherine mentioned, we're trying to limit it to two guests per student. Um, so you'll go in there, you'll pick your arrival time. Uh, you'll have your 30 minute window. That's when we ask you to arrive on campus so you can begin the unloading process. And we are getting questions of what happens if I don't pick an arrival time? Well, we don't assign them for you. Um, so we are gonna pester you the rest of the summer to go in there and pick your arrival time because we will not assign it for you. We don't know what works best for you and your family in terms of when you'll show up to campus. And so we'll continually send you emails and reminders to go pick that time. If you have picked your arrival time and you need to cancel it or reschedule it, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. In the housing portal, if you go to the schedule my arrival link in the top gold menu, uh, you click on that. And if you have an arrival time, it'll tell you what it is. And if you want to cancel it, there's a little cancel button just off to the right hand side. You just cancel that and it'll let you pick a new arrival time that fits best with your schedule and your family schedule. Yep. So super easy. Very easy. If you have your arrival time and you or someone who may be helping you move in starts to experience symptoms of COVID-19 or any other illness uh, that we don't want around a large number of people, we ask that you email hrlaccommodations at kennesaw.edu. That will trigger a service ticket for one of our occupancy team members to reach out to you and schedule a time for you to arrive that's not during the normal move in weekend. Mm -hmm. And we'll make any accommodations we can just to support you as you're overcoming your symptoms and might be feeling better. Um, however, we can't accommodate any special requests. So if August 12th through the 15th in Kennesaw or August 14th and 15th in Marietta doesn't work for you, Unfortunately, you've got to come within that time frame. Mm -hmm. There will be some move-ins, some very select move-ins that happen on Sunday the 16th, but we're trying to limit those uh, because our staff is going to be worn out after four days of full move-in. Yeah. Uh, the very last page in the housing portal after you pick your move-in time is a confirmation page <laughs> that lets you know what time, what day and time you picked for move-in. There's also this really fancy QR code that we're going to ask you to either print or screenshot and bring to move-in. So Catherine was talking about the contactless move in with that QR code. When you show up to pick up your housing room keys, we're going to scan that QR code and check you into your room. Super cool. We're really excited that we're getting to pilot this this year and are going to be able to provide a contactless check in. Yeah. And I want to reiterate something that Chris said. If you are feeling like sick or anything like that and you're not able to make it, it's so important that you let us know. Um, if you just decide like, oh, well, I'll just show up later or anything like that, our teams just might not be able to help you right. because there might not be anyone um, prepared, you know, to do the check-in process. So please, please, please remember to email us. It is hralaccommodations at kennesaw.edu. We'll have one of our team members put that email in the comment section so you can save it. Um, but just remember that we, we need to know what's happening with you um, because if you don't let us know, we will assume that you're just not going to show up. Right. And if that happens, you're going to be getting some other communication from us, possibly some fees. So we don't want that to happen. Communication is super duper important yes. um, through this through this move-in process. Yeah, so I, I do want to add one more thing. Yeah. Uh, if you don't show up for move-in weekend, the first day of classes is, is Monday, August 17th. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, the 18th, we are gonna drop you from your housing assignment. If you have not shown up and have not communicated with us some sort of delay that you're experiencing, we're gonna cancel your room assignment and then turn around for those of you on the wait list, we're gonna turn around and offer those rooms to students who are still looking for housing for fall 20 and try to get you moved in that first week of classes. So please communicate with us.
Yeah. Um, so there's a few things that um, students need to do before coming to campus. So I quickly want to talk about our pre-arrival checklist. You can find this on our website, ksuhousing.kennesaw.edu. If you go to the move-in um, icon on the on the home page, it will take you to our move-in page that has so much great information. But one of those little um, menus that is like an accordion, it opens up, is our pre-arrival checklist. And I wanna go over some of those items that you need to do before coming to campus so that you are well prepared. Mm -hmm. This will really just help set you up for success and make sure that your move-in process is smooth. If you miss one of these steps or just don't complete it before move-in, it could cause a delay in your move-in check-in process and we don't want that to happen for you. So. The first thing is to complete your submission process for your talent card. So after orientation, um, you will receive a email from our team that tells you how to submit the online photo submission process for your talent card. Why is this so important? Because you will submit your, you will get your talent card as part of, of your drive-through check-in process. If we don't have your picture, you can't get your talent card. And if you don't have your talent card, you can't you get can't into your in. residence yeah. hall. <laughs> so it, it becomes a domino effect, really. So that's why it is super duper important. So res it's, I feel like it's even more important for residential students. So yes. please make sure that after um, your orientation day, you are looking for that email from us that talks about how to submit your photo um, for your talent card. The second thing is to set up your Salto pin. So your, pin, your Salto pin is the key pin keypad lock thing that you need to do <laughs> before getting into your residence hall. It's really just another layer of security for you. Um, a lot of students have been saying, I haven't been able to do it. I don't know how to do it. We're going to have more detailed um, and up to date um, like processes, basically a guide for you on our website, but a good tip is to do it after orientation as well. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where you did orientation, you do your photo submission, and then you go set up your Salto pin. And so make sure that you do that before coming to campus. You're gonna set that up through door access, um, and their email is on their website as well. So if you're experiencing issues with setting that up, please reach out to the door access team and they'll be able to email you back. The next thing is to review your immunization requirements. Um, there are some requirements that you need to complete as a student before coming to campus. There's some forms for meningitis and things like that that you need to fill out and have ready before coming to campus. So make sure that you review those. And as always, remember your payment deadline. So payment deadline for this year is August 31st. It is in line with all of the other payment deadlines, which is different for us. Um, usually the payment deadline for housing is earlier, um, but this year it's on the same date. So August 31st is when all of your tuition fees, housing, all of that needs to be taken care of, whether it's through a payment plan, you pay all up front, you do whatever it is that you need to do that makes sense for you and your family. All of those payments are going through the bursar's office. So the bursar's office is going to be able to answer any questions that you have about payment and um, you know information and things like that. So make sure that you reach out to them with any questions. If you are planning to bring a car on campus, you do need a parking permit. Residential students will get a will need to purchase a residential parking permit. Um, so make sure that you are doing that in the parking portal. Um, you also need to do that after you register for classes. So really it's all dependent on when your orientation day is that you'll be able to do some of these other steps, but please keep that in mind. And then as part of that pre-arrival checklist, we have our packing list. Our packing list is very detailed. We have suggestions on things that we believe that you need to bring um, to make your on-campus stay successful. It also has the bed sizes on there. We've gotten a few questions on social media about what size is my bed in KP? What size is my bed in Hornet Village? Well, go to, go to our website, look at the packing list, and it will tell you what sizes they are so you can purchase your sheets. Um, and it also has a do not bring list. Yes. So this one's really important. Hugely important. Yeah, so we talk about on that list, you know, please leave your personal bed at home, yeah. um, your full size <laughs> refrigerator. It's just not going to fit anywhere. Um, your dressers and all of those things that we just don't need for you to bring. Um, it also has prohibited items such as candles. We don't allow open flames. Um, hot, what are those called? Burners. Hot plates. Hot plates. We also don't allow those. So there's a few things on there that you definitely want to review as you're packing your boxes and getting ready to move on campus. Something that's optional, but we highly encourage. Strongly Strongly, recommend. strongly encourage yes. is renter's insurance. So 
there are some really affordable and great options for renter's insurance. Um, parents can usually add a student on mm -hmm. their home insurance or car insurance or whatever you have for your family. Um, but we highly recommend that. And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to be really smart and I'm going to be really um, responsible. But you can't say the same thing about your neighbor. Exactly. Yeah. You don't know what your neighbor is doing. And if they decide to make churros at 12 o'clock in the morning and set off a fire <laughs> alarm, that happens. That happens. That happens. It is a real example, yes. um, you know, because someone decided that they wanted to fry something for the first yes. time in their life, and yes. that's what happened. So just keep yeah. those things in mind. We highly encourage you to do that. And we have a brand new partnership this year that we are so excited to launch. It is with our campus marketing, or OCM, and we have a great partnership with them. Um, you can get your bedding through them. You can also purchase, parents can purchase um, really cool like goodie bags that they can send their students. Um, they're like care packages that are full of snacks and treats and just really cool things that will just make your students stay. Yeah. So we have more information about that on our um, website. So you definitely want to check those out. But those are just some things that we recommend that you do before coming to campus. And like I said, if you need a reminder of those, they're on our website. All on the website. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about the students who are, are getting a little bit of a jump start. Those who get to move in early. Yes. You know, we talked about the, the official move in dates, um, but there are two groups out there that get to move in early. We have our marching band students and we have our sorority recruitment women. So if you are one of those two groups, you're special. You, you get to move in early. Marching band, your move in is gonna be Saturday, August 8th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And just like everybody else, you will get a time ticket to go pick your move-in arrival time in our housing portal. And that's been going on. I know as of this morning, there were about 30 students in Margie Man who had picked a time. So you're, you're getting the job done. You know what's going on. <clears throat> but it's Saturday, August 8th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll have a check-in location on the Marietta campus and a check-in location on the Kennesaw campus. So your, your experience will be a little bit different in terms of you know, what that's going to look like and feel like for you but we're going to have all the amenities there as well. We'll have the moving bins available for you. You will not be doing a drive through check-in. You will physically park, get out of your vehicle, and then come into one of our offices to pick up your room keys and your talent card. The sorority women, you are going to be Monday, August 10th and Tuesday, August 11th. The times are a little bit different because on Tuesday you have something that starts at, I believe, 3 or 4 p.m. that day. So on Monday, August 10th, the move-in times are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then on Tuesday, August 11th, you're 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So just keep that in mind. I believe the recruitment schedule has a virtual event at 3 o'clock that day. So if you're coming in on Tuesday the 11th, you may just, you know how much time it's going to take for you to move in. You may want to pick a time earlier in the day. Uh, but those, that's your information. Again, sorority, you will also select your, your arrival time within the housing portal. And I believe as of this morning, there were about 75 or 80 who had done it. And if you are a student and you feel like you should be on the marching band or sorority list, please reach out to those offices directly. We get our list from them and we've, we've gotten those lists. I got an updated list this morning from sorority. And so we have tagged everybody in our system that we are aware of, but their registration is ongoing. So for example, I believe the sorority recruitment deadline is July 24th. So if you're a late registrant to that, just wait. We may not have gotten your name from them yet. Give us a, a little bit of time and we'll tag you in our system and then you'll see the appropriate move-in appointment page. So yeah, that's early move-ins. We're excited for you guys to come in a little bit early. You get to um, you know, experience on-campus life a couple days before your cohort, but we're excited for you. Yeah, so for those students who aren't moving in early, um, you will be receiving some collateral from us to your house. Some so, super cool collateral. Yeah, so we're really working on it right now. Um, and what we wanted to create for you is a guide. So everything that we're talking about here today will be in a printed guide that's going to be sent home to you. Um, so you're going to be getting one one guide and inside it will have all of the information that's going to make your move in successful as well as two hang tags. So you will have a hang tag for students and a hang tag for parents. So. We're going to talk about a little bit of the overview of what a move-in day will look like. And I want to start by talking about the check-in process yes. and why we use hang tags. So we piloted this last year and it actually went really well. It was, it was a huge success. Yeah, so we're really excited to do it again this year because we think it helps students and parents be able to understand how the process worked for them. So when students and parents get to campus, it doesn't matter what campus you are, Kennesaw or Marietta, you will have 
two separate like check-in processes. And parents are like, what? Yeah. Where is my student going? I have to leave my baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're gonna be able to meet up with them later. The reason we do that is because students do need to get certain things in order to be able to get into their unloading zones and parents will go straight into the unloading zone. So yep. your hang tags, what they have is a QR code on the back that links to our website and it will help you choose. So if I am a student, I will scan the QR code with my phone and it will pull up a page and it will say, are you a Marietta student or a Kennesaw student? I will pick my campus and then it will show me a list and say, okay, what community are you living in? So for example, let's say that I am living in University Village Suites. I will click University Village Suites and it will bring up a map specifically mm -hmm. for me and it will say, as a student, this is where you will go to check in and after you check in, this is where you will go to unload. So that's really important because these maps are specifically designed designed to make sure that it takes you to your unloading zone. Mm -hmm. Every student will have an unloading zone that is specific to their community. So a student living in KSU Place does not have the same unloading zone as a student living in University Village or University Village Suites or ARC, and same thing goes for Marietta. So mm -hmm. if you're living at Hornet Village, you don't have the same unloading zone as you know University Columns or Commons or, or Courtyard yeah. because they're all in different spaces. So make sure that you follow the map for your zone. Parents mm -hmm. will do something very similar. You will scan your parent hang tag, it will open up a page and it says, I'm a parent on the Marietta campus or on the Kennesaw campus. And then you will choose your student's community and it will take you to your student's unloading zone. You will meet up with your student at the unloading zone. So that yes. means that there, that's where you will, your student will be able to go check out a moving bin and you'll be able to put all of your stuff in your student's moving bin and trolley it over to their space. So it's very important that parents, you follow the directions on your hang tag and students, you follow the directions on your hang tag. If a student goes to the unloading zone without having gone through the check-in process, we won't know that you're on campus. You right. won't have your room key. You won't have your talent card. Um, and it's the same thing. If a parent goes through the check-in process, there's nothing that the parent can do because we need proof that the student is coming. So just keep that in mind as you're going through it. So this is how the drive-through check-in process will work. Chris talked about the 30 minute time slots. Mm -hmm. Again, to reiterate, it does not mean that you have 30 minutes to move in. It just <laughs> means that if you are scheduled from 10 to 10.30, we need you to arrive in that window of time so that we're able to socially distance people out. So when you arrive, you will follow your hang tag through your check-in zone. And students, this is crucial. You need to have a government issued ID with you. So. That means a photo ID, a passport, a driver's license, something that we can say, oh, it's you, you're here, right. um, and we can confirm that, not, that it's Not a social security not card. Not a social security yeah. card, <laughs> not a library card. Not a debit card. Not a debit card, a photo ID. So a passport yeah. or a driver's license is really what we wanna see. And the first thing that you are going to pick up is your talent card. So this is why it is so important that you submit your photo early because if you haven't submitted your photo, we're gonna have to reroute you out and we're gonna have to send you to take your picture and then come back. Yes. And so it's just gonna delay the whole process. So make sure that you've submitted that photo because that's the first thing that you're going to do. After you um, pick up your talent card, you will go to a second checkpoint and it's all in one space. You don't have to go anywhere crazy. You will go to a second touch point and that's where you're going to show your QR code um, to pick up your bedroom keys. So very important that you either have it printed out or you have it screenshotted on your phone, either way is fine. And our team will take a picture or scan it. Um, and then from there, you will head over to your unloading zone. So students go through the check-in process, parents go through the unloading zone yep. directly. I know that's terrifying for a lot of yes. parents. It causes a lot of anxiety. But it worked last year. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> our, our goal on moving day, so there's some business that has to take place. You have to get your bedroom key, your talent card, like Catherine was saying. Parents don't need to be involved in that. This is the first chance for your student to be a little bit independent. Send them through that checkpoint by themselves and then they will meet up with you at the unloading zone. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about unloading now. Yeah. So students, after you get your talent card and your room key, now comes the fun part. Well, fun is, is subjective. It's August, you're gonna be moving outside. It's Wear hot. comfortable shoes. Please, Th I, this is not a fashion show. No, it's not. It, this is, you know, your day to impress is August 17th. <laughs> On your move-in day, come in shorts. And if you are one of those students who are getting a t-shirt from us, wear your t-shirt, yes. sneakers, um, and your mask. <laughs> yeah, I do not recommend open-toed shoes on move-in day. No. You know, historically, this is my ninth move-in at Kennesaw, and it's gonna be blazing hot. It's hot. You will sweat <laughs> a lot. 
Uh, luckily, all the rooms have air conditioning. It'll be great once you get inside. But parents, you'll go to the unloading zone. You will wait approximately, I'm going to guess, five minutes. I think that's, that's about how long it's going to take for your student to go through their first checkpoint and then loop back around to the unloading zone. We try really hard to make that process very efficient and just really we're time sensitive. So we want to get students in and out of that business part as they're picking up their talent card and key. And I feel like we have to reiterate, the check-in process will go quickly if your student plans appropriately. Great point. So if your student has that ID ready to go, if your student submitted their picture and their talent card is ready to go and they yeah. have that QR code, it's going to go like this. Boom. Yeah. So if they don't have those things ready, then you're going to be waiting at that unloading zone a little bit longer. Yes. Yes, you will. If you haven't submitted your photo online on the day of move-in, we are going to take you to a little parking lot where you will park, get out of your car, walk to go get your picture taken, wait for your card. That will delay you significantly. Yeah. So please submit your photos online. Um, so once you get to the unloading zone, one of the things that I would absolutely recommend is pack all of the belongings into one vehicle. Uh, you know, you're moving in in August. You don't really need your winter clothes or maybe your down comforter. Maybe just pack for the first couple months and just put it all in one vehicle. And then that way we're like I mentioned those moving bins earlier that we're going to sanitize in between uses. We're going to have roughly 120 of those on the Kennesaw campus, about 80 on the Marietta campus. There's a lot more students than that. So we do recommend that you bring your own hand trucks, dollies, those little pull behind wagons uh, that, that some families may have for picnics and whatnot. Someone asked if they could bring a golf cart. Um, that one's a no. That's definitely a no. <laughs> no golf carts, please. No golf carts. <laughs> no mot motorized vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> because we have limited bins, we do put a time limit. You'll get exactly an hour with that bin. And there won't be anything, there'll be no, you know, uh, exchange of a driver's license or collateral. It'll be com completely contactless. You won't have to sign for anything, but we will take your name and your phone number and the room that you're going to, and we will call you uh, probably 50 minutes into your hour long adventure with that bin. And we're going to say, hey, you're coming up on time. Um, we need that bin back for the next person coming in. Mm -hmm. So I, I say all that, just be prepared. You may be hand hauling things up to your room. The goal for us is try to get it in one trip, maybe two, all the things in your car so that the next person coming in behind you can have a clean sanitized bin to use for their, their exciting time coming up. Once you get your car unloaded, we are going to ask that you move it to a different parking spot. So there will be spaces marked and identified as unloading spots. So the goal there is to get everything out of your car into the bin and then from the bin to your room. And then we're going to give you a, a period of time to get that done, but then you have to move your car for the next wave of people coming in. Um, and like Catherine said, we've got a 30 minute time slot in between arrival times. Uh, we understand it may take longer for you to empty out your car and get it in the building, but we're going to be flexible with that. Yeah. And let's say you forget something. You know, I, I am a list person. I always have a list of everything I might need to buy or pack. Uh, if you forget something, but when you get here on moving day, don't worry. We have these really awesome, um, what do you call it? Move in marketplace is what yes. we're calling them. So in Marietta, there'll be one right next to the R10 building, which is the main housing and residence life office. And in Kennesaw, it will be in UB 6000 right next to the North parking deck. And they're going to have everything. Catherine mentioned if you forgot your mask or a family member, they'll have those for sale. They're going to have these awesome t-shirts for sale. They're going to have general items that you may need that maybe you forgot. And we have a Walmart and a Target, you know, they're going to be hopping on those moving days. So you can just buy this stuff right here on campus and save yourself a lot of time and headache. Yeah, I think most commonly forgotten things are like light bulbs. Light bulbs, um, yes. Power strips, those yeah. are usually pretty forgotten. People like, just pack, think of things like that, like power chargers, stuff like that. You will, you'll probably need them when you I, get I mean, here. going back to the packing list, follow the packing list. Yes. I mean, it's all on there, I promise you. And Definitely. every year we, we get these random questions and we're like, hmm, that would be good for the yeah, list. Yeah, we need to add that in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, once you get to your room, you're going to have a ton of information in this welcome folder for you. It's going to have a newsletter, information about the laundry, how to connect to our wireless internet system. It's going to have a wealth of information for you. And then we're also going to have these magnets uh, that will have emergency information on them. It's going to have all the important numbers that you need to program into your cell phone when you get here, mm -hmm. like your RA, your resident assistant on call number. We have someone on call 24-7, 365. For each community. For each community, right. So you need to plug your RA's phone number in into your cell phone just in case you need it. 
And speaking of RAs, you're going to be getting a welcome email from your RA sometime soon in the next week or so, right? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe two weeks. Um, so you'll get a, a personalized email introducing the RA to you and letting, letting you know exactly what an RA does and how they're going to be there to support you. Absolutely. And if you need help on move-in day, we have a lot of different people who will be waiting in the wings to help you out with any issue you might have. If you have Wi-Fi connection issues, we will have a system by which you can put in a ticket, uh, a work order, and then we have technicians who will come to your room and help you figure out how to get connected. They may do it over the phone, just again to maintain distance and to keep everybody safe. Uh, if you have a maintenance issue in your room on the day of move-in, we do have the housing portal. You can't see it yet, but when you're checked into your room, there's going to be a new tab in the housing portal that says maintenance. And that's where you can put in work orders for your room. Yeah. You don't need to see it until you're actually physically checked in. So that's the importance of the check-in process as mm -hmm. well. Uh, we're going to have card services there to help troubleshoot any issues with those talent cards that you might have. Uh, and then you're going to see a ton of staff members wearing these shirts on move-in day. And really, anybody can answer most any question for you. We'll also have these information booths available um, where you can walk up and talk to somebody and get all your questions answered. Yeah. So we know that's a lot of information. Lot. And it's going to be an exciting, but also it's going to be, you're going to be tired <laughs> by the end yes. of the day. Um, and, and we know that there's, there's a ton. So it's why we've tried our very best to make sure that you've got guides, um, that you've got a lot of information available to you. Students, please take the time to read. And we know that that's not really what you want to do, but in that <laughs> newsletter, when you get there, um, that newsletter is going to cover some really, really important things that you need to know. Who are your RAs in your community? Who are your RDs and your ACs, your leaders there? Where are your trash locations? Yeah, that huge. one is so important. Yes. Um, so all of those things are going to be in that newsletter for you. So please take time to read it. We're also going to reiterate um, the residential code of conduct and the residential handbook that you'll want to read. So you know the do's and the don'ts um, and some other things that are just going to set you up for success. But parents, family, we know that after that day, you know, you're going to be feeling some sort of way um, when you're leaving. Some of you are going to be like, Yes! <laughs> um, and some of you are going to be like, you know, wiping your tears as you leave. But our amazing um, partners uh, with parent family programs are going to have a farewell tent for you. So it's going to be a drive through process, but please make sure you stop by their tent as you leave. They're going to have some information, some goodies to hand give to you. It's going to be contactless as well, but um, they're a great resource and partner with us. So if you have questions or concerns, grievances, sadness that you want to communicate <laughs> to someone. Um, Chelsea and Sharon are amazing partners with us. Um, and the parent portal really is a wealth of knowledge. Um, we answer a lot of questions about housing oh, yeah. in, in the parent family um, portal. So please make sure that you are partnered with them, connected with them, um, because they're just great and, and a great information to you. Uh, we talked a lot. A lot, yeah. But we know that you have questions. Tiffany is in the wings. Um, she's nodding her head, so I know we have a ton of questions to answer, but we're going to do as many as we can in the time that we have left. Yeah, hey, listeners. Um, my name is Tiffany Hart, and I am reading all of your comments. So thank you all for commenting. We love the T-shirt. Oh, Everyone yeah. loves the T-shirt. That's great. They really I'm want like, the T-shirt. I want to like, show it off again. Yes, yeah. this is the T-shirt. So parents, if you've been commenting, this is the the parent shirt that we're giving away to some of you um, that are commenting. So thank you so much for commenting your questions. We've got about 20 minutes left. Yeah. So I'm going to ask the questions that have been asked the most. Okay. Uh, I will also say that we lost connection for about two minutes. So there was a good chunk of information about social distancing guidelines for move-in that we might have missed. Um, and I think the wait list, it would be good if you okay. touched on that. So sure. um, before we go further into our questions, I just want you guys to reiterate some of that social distancing that they can expect on move-in day and after yeah. move-in sure. would be good. And then we'll jump into some questions. Yeah. I'll talk about the social distancing and you can talk about the wait list, but okay. I'm going to hit the ones that are like those top highlights and we will have this information. It is posted already. So on our move-in page, you can read it to 
to all the detail over and over again if you want to. Um, but the first thing is that all staff members, volunteers, students are required to wear a face covering or mask while, while they are on campus and guests. So parents, um, if you're coming with your student, you will also be required to wear a mask. You can wear a disposable one like this. You can go to our bookstore and buy one or our move-in marketplaces and buy one. Um, if you want to be in that KSU spirit, students are going to receive one when they check in. So as they are in For that check for, for free, free. yes, yeah, for free. Yeah. Um, we are gifting it to you. Um, so just keep that in mind that as you're coming in, students are gonna receive one to wear. Um, we don't have one for every every person coming, but you, they will be available for purchase. Yeah. Um, any high frequency area is going to be sanitized um, throughout the day. Door handles, elevators, uh, we're gonna prop doors open. So. Mm -hmm. Those things that are going to be high frequency touch points we're, are going to be sanitized often. We will also have hand sanitizer available throughout the community so that you can get a squirt and make your hands clean. Um, we ask that students don't bring more than two people um, for the, for the move-in process. Um, we know that that can be a sore spot for many people, but we just ask that you help us out with that because it does prevent that we have a ton of people. Um, it's not so much about the drive-through check-in process, it's when we get into tighter spaces like hallways. And elevators. And elevators. Yeah. So just keep keep that in the back of your mind um, because you know, if you if if one family follows it and they only have three people coming in, but one family decides, oh, it doesn't really matter. We're going to bring eight people that day, and your neighbors, um, that that space can get pretty tight. So just keep that in mind um, as we go through. Um, the move-in process. We've talked about the move-in um, arrival times and we went into detail on why we did that, how we did that, the window of times that are allocated. You can read more about that on our website as well and students have received email communication from us specifically about the arrival times. So make sure that your student has scheduled one for them. Um, it is a drive-through check-in process which means that your student does not need to leave their vehicle in order to check in with us. Um, the move-in bins are going to be disinfected very frequently. Um, so those are some of the top social distancing guidelines that we're doing. Again, they are reiterated on our website, so please make sure that you visit our website for more details. Yeah, and the wait list, we have um, several hundred students still on the wait list right now. Uh, we talked about where we cut off that on July 31st, we won't be doing any more assignments until after the start of school. Uh, and that's really just for our own sake so that we can prepare for move in and get that as, as awesome as it can be. Uh, but we have placed around 650, 700 students off the wait list. Uh, so don't, don't give up yet because the past couple years we have placed well into September and early October off of the wait list. And we mentioned again, if, if you're having challenges getting to campus during your move in time, please communicate with us. Because if you are out there on the wait list on Tuesday, August 7, 18th, we're gonna be dropping any student that didn't show up for move-in and did not communicate with us what's going on with them. So you'll see a large number of students getting placed off the wait list, hopefully that first week of class. And we'll try to get you moved in before that second weekend of school. Mm -hmm. Thanks guys. Um, so there have been a lot of questions in the comments about dining and what mm -hmm. dining operations look like. And so I'm just gonna comment um, that we have a Facebook Live event coming up on July 29th, next week, yes. next Wednesday. Um, I, I will be on that one, this is Tiffany. And we'll be talking all about dining. So we're, we're gonna be answering your questions about what dining operations look like during move-in and after move-in. Um, some great questions coming in. So I hope that you guys will tune into that dining event on the 29th at 2 p.m. Um, so we won't be answering dining questions. We wanna focus on housing with the last 15 minutes that we have. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna push you guys and encourage you to come, to come to that event. So next question for you guys is, what is gonna happen after fall break? Are students allowed to stay in their rooms oh, um, that's a great when, question. when classes move online? That's an awesome question. We're getting that a lot. So housing and residence life is a 24-7, 365 operation. We have never closed our doors during December break, so I'll use that as an example. Uh, final exams in December end, students go home for the break, they're, they have, they're like three weeks out of school. You don't have to move out. You can stay here and live with us, and it's going to be the same this year. So after fall break, you do not have to go home. We have amazing internet on campus. Uh, if you want to utilize that to finish your semester online, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you can come and go as you please um, before the start of spring semester as much as you want, as often as you want. 
uh, it's the space is yours for the using. So you do not have to go home. Happy to have you stay and, and use our internet to finish online. Yeah, and I think a lot of students have asked like, do I need to take out all of my stuff and then come back in January? No. no, no, no. You have the same room for fall and spring semester. You can leave all of your stuff here if you wish to. If you want to take all of your stuff home and then come back, that's fine. That's up to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you do whatever you want, but you don't have to leave. Um, and, and think about how calm it's going to be. It's going to be so quiet. It's going to be serene. Um, you're yeah. going to have campus to yourself. Uh, so. Yeah, you're welcome to stay. And we will have professional staff yes. on call as well. So that's always something that we want to um, reiterate with you, that we will have professional staff 24 at Christmas Day, New Year's Day. Someone is here if you need help. Yep, every single day of the year. Great. Um, can you touch on, Chris, this might be a better question for you. What is the new guest policy for the year, uh -huh. and how does that really impact move-in? Like if, okay. if guests are coming off campus to help their uh, friends move in or their family move in, kind of what's the policy? How long can they stay? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so a guest, we define as a guest as anybody who doesn't live in your particular unit. Uh, so that's anybody, even if it's someone else who lives on campus, is coming to visit your unit. Um, each resident is allowed one guest, and this is after move-in weekend, let's just assume this is the first week of school, you're allowed one guest per resident and you are not allowed to have any overnight guests. And we define that, I believe, as anyone staying after 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, so after 1 a.m., your guests need to go. They're not allowed to spend the night. Uh, and that is really, the parents are probably jumping for joy. Students are probably real mad about that one. <laughs> but uh, that's for your safety. Uh, so one guest per resident, and then no overnight guests. Where can students find more information about a housing, pl uh, housing payment plans um, and how all that's going to work? Yeah, so the housing payment plan is all going through the Bursar's office. Please don't immediately jump off this call and call them and ask them about the payment plan because there's some final touches that are happening behind the scenes before we make that available. Uh, Megan, Shane, if you're watching in the Bursar's, I'm, tr I'm trying to save you phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, uh, Catherine and Tiffany, we have a really slick uh, guide that's going to help you figure out how to do that. It's really simple. There's an electronic portal. It will all be done through the bursar's office. We're just not quite ready to turn that switch on for that payment plan yet. But it will be available for August 31st. Yes, it <laughs> so absolutely just will. Rest assured. And the payment deadline isn't until August 31st. So, right. so students have more time this year to, yes. to figure that payment plan yes. piece out. Yeah. Um, can families come and walk campus if they want to figure out where their room is going to be or where their apartment's going to be and all of that fun stuff? So. Uh, Sure, um, <laughs> but the residence halls are not open. So yes. right now, what is happening is what we internally like to call turn. Yeah. Um, so right now we are getting all of the residence halls prepped and ready for move-in. That means that we have contractors in the rooms painting, cleaning, um, Shampooing the carpet. Yes, just like everything sanitizing. that needs to be done everything. to make sure that your room is move-in ready. So the residence halls are not open right now because of that. Um, if you try to get in, the door won't open for you because it has security on it. So this is a good place to talk about how you get into your residence hall anyways. Um, without your talent card, you can't get in. Right. The doors just don't work like that. You do have to hold your talent card, have access coded on there in order for the door to open. So you, even if you tried to come right now, you wouldn't be able yeah. to get into the residence hall. Yeah. Um, one great tip for you all to do is to use our virtual tours. So we have a virtual tour for every single floor plan that we have across both campuses. So even if you're living in a three by three in University Village, which is like, you know, the, the, the unicorn, unicorn <laughs> the unicorn floor plan, because we don't have that many of them, we have a virtual tour for that. Um, what's great about the virtual tours is that they have a measuring tool. We've gotten this question a lot. How big is my room? What kind of curtains can I put in? How big is my bed? measure it online so there is a it is to scale and you can use the virtual um, measuring tool to put like a point in one place and a point in another place and it will give you exactly how big it is so if you're looking to decorate your room and make it your own which we encourage um, use that virtual tour because it's going to be able to give you that in-depth look without actually being on campus yeah great um, when do students get to meet their RA Move-in day. That's going to happen on move-in day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Move-in day is a little bit hectic, so you, you may cross your RA in passing and see them in passing. But then that Sunday, August 16th, um, there will be some sort of uh, virtual floor meeting or some sort of virtual meeting where you'll get to meet your RA. 
And like we talked about, there'll be this welcome email that's coming soon from them. Uh, and then you can stalk them on social media all you want. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. So for our returning students that already have a Salto pen mm -hmm. and already have a Talon card, do they need to reset their Salto pen and do they need another Talon card? So it's the same Talon card. You don't need a new Talon card. Um, I don't believe that you need to reset your pin. Um, every so often you have to do that because the system like makes sure that your security gets updated. Um, so just make sure that you're you're going in there and making like just update it, update your pin for this year, um, and make sure that you've got a new one. Um, if you try to use your old one, it will probably tell you, uh, -uh you can't use the same password again. It's it's like with your email, your student yeah. email. You have to reset your pin every once in a while for security. So make sure that you have a new one for this upcoming semester and. Students who've already lived on campus already know about updating your card on a hotspot. You will need to do that again. So new students, what what is that? You're probably like, what does that even mean? So right. in your residence halls or near your residence halls, there are these boxes um, that are going to be labeled and they're called hotspots. Before you are able to open your um, your door, basically, it needs to say like it, it needs to basically like confirm mm -hmm. that you are here. So you will hold your card at the hotspot and it will like blink for a little bit and then it will turn green. And that's basically your green light to say like, all right, your card is good to go. Now you can move it. Yes. One good one thing to be on the lookout for is in that key packet that we are giving you, there are instructions on how to update your card at the hotspot. So make sure you're reading that. Um, and we'll have people on standby to help answer questions about that. Mm -hmm. Catherine, can you talk about the hang tags that are being mailed home to students and what a parent and family member should do if their student doesn't have a car, but their student's going to be riding in their car with them? Sure. So um, the hang tags are going to come with your move-in guide. So inside your move-in guide, it's going to like open out and in a little pocket are going to be two hang tags, one for the student, one for the parent. If the student does not have a vehicle and you are all coming in one car, then for you will only do the student right. process. Also, so, thank you for yeah, only yeah. taking one yeah, vehicle. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so if your student isn't going to have a car on campus, that's perfectly fine. We've got other transportation um, available for them, like the Big Owl bus. But that means that you do not need to do a separate check-in process. You only need to do one, and you will go through the student check-in process. So the, the reason that we do that, if you are bringing two vehicles, um, is so that the parents don't basically clog up our line. Um, because it is a drive-through process, we want to make it as efficient as possible. Um, so we ask that if you are bringing two vehicles, that one be designated for parents or guests and one be designated for students so that the student can go through that process, pick up their talent card, pick up their key packet and meet you know, you, you, the parent or the guest at the unloading zone. So if your student is only, if you and your student are only coming in one car, go through the student check-in process. Right. If, you're, if you and your student are coming in two vehicles, like your student is going to have a vehicle that is staying on campus with them, please use both hang tags and go through the process separately. Thank you. Um, we've gotten a lot of different questions in a lot of different formats um, asking kind of what life looks like in the rooms this year as far as how housing residents life might be enforcing social distancing in the apartments. And I know we've talked about this on previous live events. Mm. And so shout out to the parents that are answering other parents questions yeah. based You're on our previous MVPs. live events. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for helping us out. Um, but could you just talk about kind of what students should expect uh, and how those roommate agreements are going to really come in come in handy this this year? Yeah, sure. So this is I think this is the language that we've been using, but your student is their personal health agent mm -hmm. when they get to campus. What does that mean? It means that once they are in their room, they are checked in and they are in their room, they are responsible for their health and safety. That doesn't mean we don't care about them or we're not doing right. anything for them. Um, but Really, our job is to make sure that their spaces are clean, sanitized when they arrive. And after they check in, they are responsible for their personal spaces. So cleaning, they are responsible for that. Our team is not going to come in after move-in and clean up after them. Um, that would be crazy. We have so right. many apartments across campus. So um, your student is responsible for cleaning their own apartment 
and their community spaces with their roommates and their own personal living spaces. Um, if they are feeling unwell, um, they need to contact HRL accommodations at kennesaw.edu and let us know as early as possible because our teams do have a plan in place. So if a student starts feeling some sort of way and they let us know, our teams are going to start getting into action to make sure that everyone in that apartment unit is safe. Right. Um, but roommate agreements are going to be huge this time. So one of the things that students are going to be making sure that they talk about is keeping their spaces clean. So that means setting up a cleaning schedule, talking beforehand on, all right, I'm bringing a Swiffer, a Clark swipe, and a vacuum. You're bringing Windex and this and that, or Ajax, or whatever it is that you use to clean your personal spaces, and making sure that students are communicating on time and before coming to campus on how they want to do that. And then during their room and agreements, they'll they'll talk about it with their RA. They're going to put it on paper and sign and say yes. like, this is what we are agreeing to, um, and that we're going to keep ourselves healthy and clean. Yeah. Um, it's up to them to talk about how they want to do in their community spaces. So that means living rooms and kitchens in the apartments, what are they gonna do in those spaces? How are they gonna keep them clean? How are they going to um, you know, ha have interactions in those spaces? And if your student doesn't feel comfortable with guests coming over from the outside, they need to talk about that with their roommates and say, I personally don't feel comfortable with you bringing people in my space, et cetera. So those are all conversations that are going to be need to have on a personal level um, and encourage your students to be open early and talk about those things early um, rather than later because then it's just gonna be awkward and like passive aggressive and you don't want that to happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So a couple things I just want to reiterate before um, we wrap up. That was going to be our last question that we asked. Um, uh, people are just curious when they're going to get their hang tags and um, their move-in guide in the mail. So that is coming in the mail very soon. You should receive it the first week of August. Yes. Uh, so be looking for that soon. Students will receive when they get to the drive through check-in process a mask, a personal thermometer, and a bottle of hand sanitizer that's just for themselves to use. Um, they'll receive that when they check in. So... Um, um, they, they will get that as part of their drive through check-in process. And then when they get to their rooms, they will find their welcome folders, which will have all kinds of information they need, but that will have the important information like phone numbers, RA on call phone numbers, things like that, that they might need um, once they've gotten to campus. So be on the lookout for those three kind of pieces, the move-in guide and hang tags, which come before the, um, when they drive through the check-in process, they will get their bedroom key and their mask, hand sanitizer, and thermometer. And then when they get to their room, they'll get all kinds of good information too. So yeah. um, that's it for questions. But thank you guys so much for all of the questions that you've asked. Um, Catherine and Chris, you guys want to close us out? Sure. Yeah. So um, one final reminder is to follow us on social media if you haven't been doing it already. On Instagram, we are at Housing KSU. Um, we post a lot of helpful information on our social media, um, events that are coming up, ways to get involved with us. Um, students know, you know, if, if you haven't been following us yet, um, you received a postcard from us earlier this summer and students who are taking a picture and posting it on Instagram, tagging us at Housing KSU and using our hashtag where owls live are actually receiving an exclusive like move in shirt. We want you to wear it um, before you come to campus. So if you want one, post and then we will send you one. Um, and then on Facebook as well, Housing KSU, we post a lot of great information. So make sure that you're following us there. Yeah. And then the Talon One Service Center, they are a great group of people. Heather, Shanitra, Crystal, if you're watching, all the students you have, you're all fantastic. Uh, they answer all of our phone calls and emails. So if you have any questions after this, 470-578-8663 is Talon One's phone number. They can be contacted via email at talon1 at kennesaw.edu. Edu. Uh, they're fantastic. Uh, and then Tiffany mentioned the Dining Facebook Live. That is July 29th at 2 p.m. So if you have questions about dining or the meal plans, we definitely encourage you to tune in then, and we'll see you soon. We'll see you at moving. Yeah, see you soon.